Hello everyone, Rebecca here and in this video I'm going to show you how to water bath can some hot peppers. So I'm starting off by washing my jars and my lids. I'm washing seven and it's very, very hot. I can handle it, but it's extremely hot, soapy water. And uh, if I end up needing more, I will wash more. But I'm starting off with seven because that's what easily fill, uh, fits in the canner. So we'll see what happens. I'll bring you back when I start filling the jars. Okay, now uh, there's a lot of people who say that you no longer have to boil your lids, uh, simmer your lids and yet I'm still going to do it just to make sure that I have a good seal. So I've washed my jars, I've got my lids simmering on a very, very low temperature. So that's, that's just how I'm doing it, hoping for a good seal on all of these. Now these are yellow peppers. That was just what they were called at the store. I don't know very much about them, but you can see how they, they fit onto my hand, and I, I do have fairly small hands. I would say this is probably three or four inches long, the pepper is, okay? Okay, so the first step is that I want to cut the tops off of these peppers and I want to seed them. I'm gonna just cut off the top. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going around and taking out the seeds. I'm not worrying about getting every little seed out, but you can say that I'm taking out the, uh, the seeds. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to cut them about a quarter to a half inch thick, like so. And I'm just going to put them into the jars as I cut them. And the reason I'm doing it that way is I don't know exactly how many jars I'll be able to fill and how much brine that I'll need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill my jars first and then I'm going to make my brine. I just thought that that would be a good way to know how much brine I need to make. Okay, so I've got one pepper out of the way and just gonna cut the top off, put that into the bag, and then continue slicing. And I'm, I'll continue that until I've cut up all of the peppers and I'll bring you back at that point. I forgot to mention that I am going to add a clove of garlic to each jar. Now, I've read different recipes. Some of them say to put a little bit of garlic in the brine, and some put a clove of garlic directly into the jar. I am going to put the garlic in the jar, and my thinking with that is that I want the I want the, I, I like garlic. I mean, that's really the bottom line. So uh, I'm gonna start with, there's one, two, three, four, five. I'll start with that and um, we'll see how many jars I end up with. Now, I used to absolutely hate peeling garlic and that was until I found out that the best way to do it is just to take a flat object of some sort. You can take a butcher knife or whatever. This is just a little spatula place it on the clove, whack it, and you'll see that the peel comes right off. Now obviously if you're wanting these to look pretty, that's not so great because it's all kind of crushed up, but I actually think from a flavor perspective it's better if it's crushed up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to take everything out, but I'm just going to stick this garlic in there. I took some of them out, and the other ones I'll put the garlic uh, down at the bottom, okay? So I'll be adding the clove of garlic to the empty jars and then putting the, this one's a little more stubborn, then putting the, the peppers on top, okay? So I'll bring you back when I have them all full. Of the peppers, I could have probably filled them a little bit higher, but I had a seventh jar that was only maybe halfway full, so I ended up kind of dividing them amongst the jars. Okay, so with the seven jars, I'm thinking that I need just um, three cups of vinegar and one cup of water. So I'm going to put that on to heat now. 
This is basically a half a recipe from uh, what's in the ball book for pickled peppers. And so everything is the same. I'm doing everything the same except for I'm just making it about half as much. Okay, so that was one cup, two cups, and that's three cups of white vinegar. And I'm adding one cup of water. And I'm just going to bring that up to a simmer. Uh, the recipe called to boil it for five minutes, but that was putting the garlic in here. And since I'm putting the garlic into directly into the jars, and you can probably see there's a little piece of garlic down there, I'm not bothering, I'm just going to bring this up to a simmer. And I've also decided that I'm going to put just a pinch of salt in each jar. The salt is not required but I like a little bit of salt, so I'm putting just a pinch of, what I have is kosher salt. Okay, so the, I let the brine simmer for a couple of minutes, and now I'm going to fill my jars. Just using this ladle. And my goal is to get it about to this bottom rim. I don't currently have a debubbler, so I'm just going to use this plastic spatula and kind of just poke around there, hopefully without tearing up any of the peppers. And you can see that the brine went down a little, so I need to add just a little bit to that. Not much, though. going to be good. Yep. All right, and so I'm going to continue this process with all seven jars. Kind of be where I can have it in camera view for you. And actually, let me go ahead and finish one jar at a time, and then that way you can see the whole process. So I'm going to slide this jar over here that I have already filled with the brine, and I'm going to use this bowl that has some vinegar and just wipe the top of the rim to make sure that it's good and clean. And I'm going to take a lid. Now remember I went ahead and simmered these lids. Even though they say you don't have to, I went ahead and did that. I'm going to put a lid on and then the band. And I'm going to do it finger tip tight. So I'm, it's, I've screwed it all the way, but not real tight. Okay, now before I start adding these to the pot, I'm going to bring the camera around so you can see uh, the pot and see what I'm doing over there. So I've put on the green weight since I am in a higher altitude. And it, the instruction book said to put it on airtight when you plug it in. So I've done that, but before I start it, it says to go to the exhaust um, thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on exhaust now just so I don't forget. And you can see that I have this rack, which has these uh, little feet uh, on there, and I'm putting that down. And then I'm using the jar lifter to put the jar in. So I'm going to fill all of these in and then I will add water to this. So go ahead and show you another one that I'm doing. All right, so I'm putting the funnel there. I'm adding the brine. And I'm going to debubble. just a slightly above what I want in terms of actually let me see I was just slightly above where I want it so I'm going to just take a spoon and get out a little bit of that and put it in the next one make sure
sure I don't have too much in there. Okay, that's perfect. All right, and I'm going to take the lid out of the hot water. And add it on. Take a ring. Put it fingertip tight. And I'm going to add it to the canner. So I'm going to keep doing that process until I've gotten all of them done. And then I'll show you the next step. Oh, I just realized that on that second one, I didn't wipe the rim. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Taking the lid back off of that one. I'm going to use the paper towel with some vinegar on it. Water would be fine on something like this, but I'm in the habit of using the vinegar. So, and then put it fingertip tight. All right, I'll take you back when I get to the next step. Okay, I now have my seven uh, half pint jars in the canner. And since I used hot brine and the jars were slightly hot because I had cleaned them in hot water, I'm adding in hot water. Now, since I'm water bath canning, I need to come above the jars. Okay, so I'm adding some more water. And it's still not above the jars yet. I've added some more water. I'm going to add a little bit more until it brings it up above the lid. All right, adding more. Whoa, I'm splashing all over. And I'm going to add just a little more. It's barely above the lids, and I want it to this fill line. So I'm adding more water now because I want to make sure that it's a good inch above the jars. That is great. All right. So I'm going to put the lid down and this green little thing is set to exhaust. There's a little arrow here and it says exhaust. So I, I grabbed a hold of the handle and I just turned it until it was at the closed position. All right, so I'm going to select water bath and then time. And the time for this particular canning recipe is 10 minutes, but I'm in a high altitude, so I'm going to set it to 15. And then I'm going to press start. And then the digital chase will begin to rotate. So I think they're calling this the digital chase. And it says the unit should begin to boil in 20 to 25 minutes you will see a constant stream of steam coming from the pressure exhaust valve when boil has been reached. Press start again when the constant stream of steam is seen. This will activate the timer. So sorry, my mom just came home and her dog is all excited. And it says do not hit the start button a third time. So basically when the uh, steam starts coming out, then I need to press the start button again and then it will start counting down. Okay, it took about 23 minutes to come all the way up to a boil, and you probably can't see, but up in here there is a stream of steam coming. That means it's ready. So I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to hit start. And you'll see that on the display here that it says 15. So that's going to start counting down now. I'll leave this on. Uh, just till it shows the 14 and and I'll speed it up of course so you don't have to watch the whole thing then I'll stop the video and I'll come back when it's about ready to count all the way down yeah okay, I hear it bubbling nicely lots of steam coming out just waiting for it to count now you can see it just hit 14 okay so I'm gonna stop the timer and or stop the camera rather and I'll bring you back when it's about done that the timer has now gone down to one minute and so it'll be finished up here in just a minute and I'll show you what happens at that point you can hear there's still steam coming out okay now it's going to off 
And what the instructions say is that one, carefully, when boiling is complete, carefully turn the lid clockwise an eighth of a turn and open the lid. All right, so it says to do it a quarter of a turn and then to open up the lid. Now, you can see that they're still boiling very nicely. It did say to then remove the jars, but I am so used to waiting a little bit, so I'm gonna wait just a minute or two to let things settle down a little bit. That just makes me feel a little better. It doesn't say to do that, so I'm assuming it's fine not to, but I'm gonna wait about one minute and, and you know, just with this lid open, give it some time for some of that heat to go out, for things to cool down just a little bit. Okay, so it's been about a minute and I'm going to go ahead and remove the jars. Oops, I already heard a pop. Don't know if you guys could hear that, but one of them has popped already, which is awesome. All canners love the sound of those popping lids. Oh, there goes another one. Oh, there goes another one. It sounds like they're all popping, which is awesome. Oh, just heard another one. Okay, so let me show you. Those are the seven jars that I pulled out. I'm going to let them sit there overnight, and then I'll let you know how they turned out and if I had any that failed. So um, I'll bring it back in the morning and let you know how this turned out, if any of them failed to seal, and so on.